Hello everybody and welcome in. Emperor Bubbles has returned and we continue on the playoffs of Total War League Season 9. It's the final quarterfinal matchup. This time we have Tay as Nervii going up against Ragnar, who is Gate. So Tay is facing Gate. That's stunning, a stunning display. So just some background on this series. We do not have game uh, replays for the whole series. I'm not going to say how long this series was, but uh, this is one of the battles in the series. I only have one battle. So at the conclusion of this battle, I'll discuss the results and the happenings, who's won, who's moving on, and uh, my thoughts going forward for that huge semifinal matchup. The winner of this has got Bobby in the semifinals. So let's uh, take a peek at the tail of the tape. Ragnar, his season nine performance sitting at five and two, and Tay also sitting at five and two, so both having great great seasons this is tay's best season yet and it was probably the biggest surprise of season nine i don't know if anybody has any other comments on that but to me very very surprising let's go down the list for ragnar ragnar sitting at 37 and 17 a 68 percent win percentage he boasts six wins in the playoffs and eight losses in the playoffs these guys have fought each other once before ragnar took the victory that was total league season eight so he holds the edge there. This is Ragnar's fifth Total War League postseason appearance. Just an incredible career this man has had in Total War League. A little bit of a fun fact from Ragnar. That's his... Uh, he, he, I asked Ragnar, give me a fun fact for you, for, for uh, anything. This is what he sent me. There it is. Likes to play Rome 2. Praise the gods indeed. That is his spelling. That is his word. We love Lord Ragnar. Alas, let's take a peek at Tay. Tay sitting at 16 and 26 overall. He has not found a victory in the postseason of Total War League. He has two losses in the postseason, a 38% win percentage. But you can see the improvement. It's there. He's, he's here now. He had a huge season, a way better season than the Emperor. And he is in the playoffs for the fruit of his labor. But let's see here. It's his first Total War League postseason appearance since... Total War League Season 4. So he's come a long ways. He's made it in. He's made it worth it. A little bit of a fun fact here is that Tay is in fact great. If you know him, it is his full name is Tay the Great. Praise be to him and praise be to the gods for this blessed day of battles. All right, let's take a look at the army compositions. Nervii is Tay again. He's got, looks like two, make it three Germanic scout riders. Two Mighty Horse, four Mighty Horse, an Osworn General. Bring the Osworn General, three Levy Freemen, some Fierce Swords, and then two supporting Osworn. So some big bad melee, two Celt Slingers, and three Celtic Warriors. So opting for the strong center of the Osworn. He's going to be facing a maniacal Horse Archer spam from Ragnar. He has eight Bow Horsemen. If I'm Tay and I see this, I am just having a bad time. Two spears in the front line, noble swords, four noble swords, and four falksmen make it five noble sword and another falksman. Let's get underway. I'm curious how this one is going to turn out. Twelve and a half minutes on the clock. So it's it's been seen now. Tay has seen his opponent's army. And this kind of gives me some flashbacks to, uh, I think, Seasons 4 and 5? Maybe just Seasons 5? When Lendon was in it? Lendon notoriously would Horse Archer spam. He made us instill a rule against Horse Archer spam. Now the cap is 8 Horse Archer units, and it's Ragnar who is bringing 8 Horse Archer units. So he is within the rules, he's within the realm, he's within the glory. And I think uh, with the eight horse archer cap, we've proven that it can be beaten. Just sometimes, you know, it, it also, you know, 19 horse archer spam can be, it, it can be beaten too. It's just a matter of, it's kind of hard to predict when it could happen. I don't think, you know, 19 bow horsemen is going to work with Kate. Maybe it would. Maybe I'm completely wrong, but luckily with the new rules, we do not have to worry about that. We'll only see eight as the first skirmish battle has uh, just released some of the arrows there. It's the bow horsemen. Let's see if they, if they got any kills. I don't... Oh, I see one kill. So one kill early on. 
as Tay, you know, Tay here probably just wants to do his best to engage, uh, to engage Gate. And look at Gate. Gate has lined up all the way as far back as he can. The red line, not too far away. I'm assuming Ragnar gonna try to push away if his men keep. Oh, keep going as there's a nice pillow. Tay catching his opponent off guard. Kills 20. Kills 20 on that pillow. So good find. Those guys only have a couple kills. But, uh, okay, you hit one. Great, fantastic. Can you hit seven more like that? That's the question. That's the concern. As, uh... If I were Tay, I'd be feeling a little... You know, a little, little pressure here. I don't know... I, sh I don't... I still don't... You know, these slingers can provide some defense. The good news is here is that the, uh... Gate horse archers are... They're not armored, so let's take a peek at the armor. 10 armor. Those slingers will rip apart. That was men if connected, and we saw that pillum connect. It killed 20. Here comes another Kel Warrior. He could potentially hit these units as they do stop. They do stop, they turn, and will probably release their arrows, maybe? Choosing not to. Are those men that not? Releasing thine arrows. Still the skirm cap. They lost seven. But the others still holding firm. As the melee battle here, it'll be interesting. You know, there's five noble sword, but the oak sword. I think the oak sword are a bit better than the noble swords. So uh, Tay probably. Yeah, I think you know he'll be happy getting into the if he can, if he can get into a melee engagement. My thoughts here is that. Ragnar does not want a melee engagement, at least not yet. Let's try to use a few more of uh, his volleys with the horse archers. He's finding the fierce sword smart there. This is a good unit, but only 45 armor. And uh, just just to comparison, the Kelt Warriors have 45 armor as well. So both uh, can take. No, they both will take the same amount of damage from those horse archers. But I like that uh, Ragnar is targeting those fierce swords who are down to nine. Er, sorry, who went eleven? Killed nine. Killed nine. That'd be impressive. He already got down to nine. Could be a lot of damage. A morale debuff. Could be a morale debuff for Lord Tay. As another pillum looks like it connected a little bit, killing five, but not a full connection as we saw the last one get twenty. That Levy Freeman though did connect. Looks like he killed about fourteen on that unit. So just gotta keep finding these, find his opponent uh, with some lazy micro, expose it, defeat it, capitalize. But the further those numbers go down, the uh, you know better chance that they will route. Look at the morale, 35 morale on those bow horsemen. So that's a unit you know that will probably not last uh, to the last man. Here comes some combinations of mighty horse charges from Tay, those spears going to get it, as are the double swords in big heat. See if the melee is coming. The melee is coming, the fox been into the back. See how long those heavy horse, or the mighty horse stick around, as the Oathsworn are in. So the initial charge killing one, but this should be nice here. Here we go, in big heat. Hitting the noble horse, or sorry, hitting the noble sword is the mighty horse and the Oathsworn right in to boot as a fierce sword right there, but there will be a flank with the Kelt Warriors. These Falksmen will not be able to hold off the enemy for too long. Not be able to hold off the enemy much at all. Still in the back now, it's a matter of what are you gonna do with your mighty horse? How do you keep these guys safe? As one mighty horse down to 18 men. Nearly baited that Levy Freeman Pillum. Ragnar was so close getting that. Does he get this one? He does. He does. Magnificent maneuver from Ragnar. Baiting that Levy Freeman. He already used one pillum, so I think that Levy Freeman is done. So now it's the melee extravaganza. Those Falksmen, as expected, not doing a good job. But those Noble Swords have been paying the price. They do rot that Fierce Sword, but the Kelt Warriors in the back taking care of business. Well, trying. They're taking care of business for now. It's now a fine. Those Kelt Warriors now get hit, but the Mighty Horse are here. Bean. Hitting a few with some nice charge, or with that nice charge there. 
Up and of note, these two slingers still in the back, still holding firm. But uh, you know they're okay. There's there's a mighty horse right there. I was gonna say I think he's a little bit alone. It's a massive melee win. Look at that, four melee to zero. They have fully swept those men. Gonna start pushing into this noble sword of the ash cheeks and then into that one. So good work there. Tay overwhelming the left flank. Overwhelming them indeed is the mighty horse being pursued by the bow horsemen, but those skirm calf keeping the enemy honest. As this noble sword, we saw his banner was blinking. Looking pretty good here for Tay. He's gonna get this noble sword. They are routed. On to the next one, and maybe you get the Kate General. Maybe you cause a uh, mass rout, potentially. Combining the horses of the skirm calf and making them melee calf. They do charge into that noble sword, that Falksman routing at 35. 19. Mighty horse. Okay, they shifted. That was weird. The, the flag move. I think that unit died. That was over there. Still a useful volley from those dramatic scout riders. Still shooting that routing unit. Gotta keep that in mind. Always gotta keep that in mind. This Oshman pushing in. I assume he's got some pillum. He does. In connecting. Nice. Nice find. 31 bow horsemen. It's Tay finding himself in this uh, mid to end game battle. Not too bad. But as Oshwan just took a volley, I think, from every single bow horseman, and he's down to 69 men. But there's those scout riders pushing into those bow horsemen. Brilliant charge there. Those scout riders certainly have the melee advantage against the bow horsemen. Certainly they do indeed. So there they go. The horsemen of Kate trying to get out of there. Let's see their uh, stamina level. Winded. When it comparing to Nervii, active. Those units could catch if they so pleased. But it's the general who's the remaining unit. These slingers trying to get into position. Looks like not a full surrounding factor on that general. Trying to, he might even send in those levy freemen to do so. But that mighty horse has captured and killed one bow horseman. So one of those uh, units, if they didn't use all their ammo, could come back to bite Ragnar. He still lives, seven men still kicking. I talked about their low morale, but they are still alive. Casualty sustained, and it's the mighty horse who actually route first. There's three mighty horse here. They are gone, so two horses have just been routed. And this bow horseman sticking around, standing tall. And that's, that's interesting, the bow horseman. Those guys are not made for melee. Is there going to be enough arrow left to kill the melee of Nervii? So here we go, let's get a, uh, get a melee count. 55 of the general, 47 of the fierce sword, 110 levy, 21 Osworn, 59 Celt. Still some slingers, certainly they have ammo. As the pursuit is on, the Nervii general is dead, if you see that. And so is the Kate general. They're both dead. This guy's so close. Oh, Tay almost had him. That unit actually stopped. Unit stopped, but uh, Tay decided to turn around. Let his men live to fight another day. That scout rider was blinking. There's the release. That could prove the end. The scout riders were... Now we're dwindling into the end game. Two minutes and 20 seconds on the clock. This could go either way. This was game number two the quarterfinals in Total War League Season 9. Tay is Nervii. And Ragnar is Gate. I wish we had the other battles or battles of this series. But alas, this is our showcase as he's in. Nearly catching those bow horsemen. So, so close. We saw those guys, uh, a contingent of bow horsemen, charge into the Oshward. Wow, two routing? Two routing, doesn't even look like he, he must have touched this one. Definitely got that one, 19 men, they rout. They are gone very tired and winded and exhausted. The scout riders are only winded. They can certainly catch these units. So now it's looking a bit dire for Kate. This horseman have been caught in 
And he's gonna have to react. We'll see if he goes. He is going in for a melee. He needs to sacrifice his horses to get rid of these men and then use the remaining arrow to shoot upon their last units. Because he's in. Looking very promising for Tay. Yes, his cab will be gone. But there's a minute left on the clock. You got a slinger. You got quite a few units left. We'll see if these units can stick around. The balance of power to me is telling, uh, is saying that there's not much ammo left for Gate. About out of ammo as the force is coming, trying to find the slingers. In the biggies. As you say. Skull crushing it on those slingers, but so close is every other unit. The ammo is surely low. Or could tell you, these guys, what was their base ammo? 15 ammo. He's been shooting all game. Still in he goes, trying to find that general. But still 53 units left for that general as there go the horse archers is easy. Beanie's Tay with a huge victory, taking down Ragnar. And guys, this was game number two of their Blessed series. Ragnar took game number one, but before we get to the results of game number three, let's take a peek at the stats. 1,500 kills to 1,400. Those horse archers, they did do a good job. It's just those noble swords easily flankable, and Tay took care of them. And then the uh, remaining stamina of those scout riders able to catch those horse archers and get them out of the battle near the end there. But alas, game number three, Ragnar took it. Ragnar moves on to face Bobby. I wish we had the battles. Once again, we needed to think of a punishment. I'm thinking crucifixion for these bastards, for these foolish scum. How dare they? How dare they do this to the Empire? But alas, brave fighters, thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And until the next one, glory be upon thee and glory to the Empire.